<laughs> How many of you believe that, take a risk here, that often sets a trap? Here's the thing they do. And that's a good thing because it's kind of a complimentary thing. I say, look at the marriage and I think, ooh. See, the problem with opposites attracting, that after a little while, opposites don't just attract, opposites attack. <laughs> if you're not like me, why aren't you like me? Why don't you go to that, That's what so, so, so don't, don't fight over that. That's just a fact of life. Uh, that, that's just the way it is. Opposites attract. This is not only true in marriage, it's true in business. I, I think of a number of people I know, and they, they've gone into business with someone, and this is the person that I need to go into business with. They've got all the things that I need to go into business, make a successful business endeavor. And after a while, they said, we are so opposite. We're so opposite. And rather than attracting any more, there's conflict arising, there's attacks going on, and, and you realize, you don't think at all alike. And it's true in marriage, it's true in business, it's true in ministry. Not in our church, because we all just get on so well together. <laughs> <laughs> Around the staff room table. Ministry, <laughs> we were there yesterday, our visiting speaker. I talked about crack parts, you know, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4 7. Uh, we have this treasury one. Urban vessels or clay jars of clay, whichever one. And uh, he went through a little exercise. He had his little clay jar here, it was full of chocolates. And the last three people came up and got our chocolates. He invited us to. He said he was generous. So we did, and, pulled it. and then he asked us what we noticed about it. Everyone noticed the chocolates, like I noticed the cherry ripe went missing quickly. And, 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 and finally, Pastor Sarah noticed there was a crack in the pot. And we have this treasure in the vessels of the crack in the pot, and once we find the crack in the pot, there's problems. And so you see, opposites attract, and even in ministry that happens, and you know the great case of Paul and Barnabas, who split. So when, when, when misunderstanding arises, and conflict happens, you've got a choice. You need to make up your mind. You need to make up your mind either to split from that or understand the truth of the matter. And the truth of the matter is that differences of opinion are natural and an inevitable part of every relationship. In fact, if you all, if, if, a, if a staff around our staff table all think the same as I do, we didn't, wouldn't need to have a staff meeting. <coughs> I just do what I do. Well, we sit around the table and whatever idea I had, whatever idea that will get reshaped around the table. And, uh, and the, the, it's, it's, it's in a, the differences of opinion are natural and they're an inevitable part of every relationship. We can't read other people's minds, right? I try. I do I try so hard. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much we are alike. So miscommunication, misinterpretation, you might laugh, you guys. <laughs> they're inevitable. So we need to climb the mountain of misunderstanding. Uh, and, and in a moment I'm going to say more about how to do that. Because see, it's not just about finding out the problems we've got, that's solving. Second mountain is the mountain of me first. I don't want so much about this. Uh, it's just uh, human nature to say, I'll meet your needs if you meet mine first. Okay? And uh, I, I can't even, don't want to bring my kids into this, but they, there's plenty of fertile information there. I've got grandkids now, so I can bring them into the situation. And uh, I got, let's say I've got four grandkids for the day. Might all be siblings, might be cousins. Uh, one of those wants the front seat to ride shotgun with granddad. You think there's only one who wants it? <laughs> no, at least three do. So we strike a deal. That's what we try to do. It doesn't always work. And so when you can be in this time, when we on the way back, we'll swap around. So, but he was there last time. He always first. So, well, that's right, I'm the oldest, he says. <laughs> Me first. But it's not just the kids in your car. It's adults do it. I will do you a deal when you do me a deal. So that's me for talk about that for a minute. The third peak in this rocky range is it, very dangerous. It's the mountain of mistakes. We are crackpots, all of us. So we're going to <coughs> all make mistakes. Many relationships are abandoned because of the mountain of mistakes. And like the cracks in the pot, uh, everyone of us has been hurt uh, uh, when someone else wronged us. We, we all have. It's not, not a, no one's immune from that. And it's too easy when we are hurt in relationships to build, to build another mountain. It's not the mountain of the south, but a mountain of bitterness. We, we kind of try to protect our heart from ever getting hurt again. Uh, and you never do that. But we, we break people off and we build a mountain of bitterness. And I just want to tell you this morning, no uh, relationship.
Egypt can ever overcome the mountain of bitterness. Can overcome the, the mountain of anger. In fact, it's sometimes good to be angry. In fact, the Bible tells us sometimes to be angry. Ephesians 4.26, be angry, but what? Do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger uh, and don't give the devil a foothold. Uh, so the whole thing is, don't let the sun go down your anger. Uh, Set your anger before you go to bed at the night time, ladies and gentlemen. Sort it out. An old senior citizen, an old senior citizen, probably me. <laughs> <laughs> He said, my wife and I have never gone to bed angry. But we sure have stayed up late a lot of times. <laughs> Don't hold on to anger. See, when you hold on to that anger, uh, it, it may turn into bitterness. And you'll have a mountain of bitterness. And bitterness acts like a poison. And here's the thing. When you're bitter at somebody else because they grieved you, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt you. It's like poison. It's like you're drinking rat poison. So I'll fix them up. I'll drink all this rat poison. You're getting sick. And they're living happily ever after. Because they don't even know what you're on about. So sort it out. Get rid of the bitterness. Get rid of the bitterness. Hold on that bitterness. And the relationship will not overcome. So three mountains. Mountain of misunderstanding. Mountain of me first. Uh, mountain of mistakes. And they're all in relationships. So I want to say relationships are not for weeks. Relationships are, uh, are, are, are for mighty warriors of God, you know. And, and, and the only way to be a mighty warrior of God is to get some supernatural help, not for God to carry you, but for He to empower you uh, so that you can love completely when you get the power of God in your life, you need God's power. The good news is that the supply of His power is without limit. And the price of resources that God offers never goes up. It's free to you. It's free to you. It's free to us. It's free to us. But Jesus has paid the price for it. In fact, he paid the supreme price for the resources that God offers. He was nailed to a cross and gave up his life for us. It's free to us because Jesus has paid for it. I want to talk this morning about strategies and tools for climbing the mountains of life. Uh, you know, uh, I just had this chit chat with someone yesterday. I don't think anyone needs to come to church to find out how bad they are. Okay. What's the problem, sir? Someone's going to tell you out there in the marketplace, the workplace, some arena, somewhere already about that. So we might just have a touch on the mountains, but seriously, that's not what you need to come to church for. Some folk love that, you know. So, well, you gave it to us this morning, Pastor. Oh, you whacked us one this morning. Why would you want to come so we to get whacked? I want to avoid getting whacked. I really don't want to stay away from getting whacked. You know, you really go to this this morning. I go, that's a good spanking this morning, Pastor. <laughs> I'm not spank anyone at all. There was a church in the Middle East that Rick Warren mentioned one of his books, it's called The Church of the Flagellation. <laughs> you go along and get good flogging every Sunday, you know. Why would you do that? You can get a flogging out there on the highway. In the marketplace. No, come here to be encouraged and to get tools for life. And so I want to give you some tools this morning you know, to overcome these mountains. And the very first one I'm going to call the rope of acceptance. <coughs> rope of acceptance. Rock, rock climbers, we're going up Mount Everest now. They use a technique with ropes called belaying. It, it involves uh, securing a climber to a rope so that he doesn't fall too far if he slips off the rope. He'll be hanging by the rope. If he slips off the rock, he'll be hanging by the rope. Might be hanging out of space out there, but at least he's hanging there and hasn't fallen down and broken himself into bits. So, it's, so what, what, if you're going to climb to new heights relationally, uh, if you're going to do it safely, uh, it, 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 it helps to connect with the rope of acceptance. That's all. Uh, Romans 5, 7, 15, 7. Accept one another then just as Christ, what? Accepted you in order to bring praise to God. So to accept others means I, I stop trying to change them. It's in marriage that's what goes on. You don't even change that person. So if you guess the way you don't it right. Obviously, I know. And in ministry, we do it. I don't change that person. And I wouldn't mean to show. I haven't got it right, but I'll soon fix that up. You see, it's not about changing people, it's about accepting people. But to really love people and climb over the mountain of misunderstanding, I need God's power to understand them. 